let's take a look at um, what is the um, basic nutrient level. One of the challenges that we have with unrooted cuttings is the cycle time, the time from harvest to harvest um, is very short. It's usually depending upon crop four to six weeks, which for some crops, they just can't take up all of the macro and micronutrients sufficient to basically get the ideal plant growth. Nitrogen is rapidly taken up by the plant. Nitrogen is seldom ever seen as a problem. It's no, seldom below 3%, which is where you start seeing nitrogen deficiency. But phosphorus is restricted in the fertilization programs because we know that research that's been done shows that excessive phosphorus plus ammonia will tend to cause the plants to stretch. And so that it's the combination of the two that gives you the stretch. And so what grow, the stock plant growers will do is they'll restrict phosphorus to the bare minimum to basically keep the plants from being too stretched and not giving you a short compact cutting. So um, once you stick that cutting, if you don't add phosphorus, of course, what you immediately start seeing is you see this purpling, um, very pre prevalent in certain crops of verbena. Usually I look at it as the petunias, calipricoa, verbena. If you see purple, you got phosphorus across your entire crop. But also this nitrogen and phosphorus can be um, a problem because as soon as the plant starts growing, nitrogen is moved from the old foliage where it was accumulated into the developing new foliage. And that translocation then gives you lower leaves that are yellow. And of course, then if you're low in phosphorus, you start getting this purple reddening and you start ending up with um, plants that are significantly reduced in vigor. Also, um, depending upon the conditions that they're grown under, you could have calcium and boron. Certain crops have boron. Normal, notice the abnormal growing points on these impatiens. That's classic calcium boron um, uptake. And there's a lot of times it has to do with either poor transpiration. It's too humid in your um, rooting area. Remember, you need to basically be drying this out. It should not be a swamp once you start rooting, you need to have it fresh. If you can walk in there and you can feel the humidity, it's too humid. You shouldn't be able to chew the air from the humidity. It should be a nice, fresh environment. One of the sleepers is that people miss get this confused because they see the plants turning yellow like we see down here, and they basically immediately assume that it is iron deficiency. Iron generally is not a deficient nutrient in most unrooted cuttings. Manganese, MN, not magnesium, MG, but manganese, MN as a micronutrient, is basically the nutrient that goes deficient and causes the plant to turn yellow. Now, of course, Nathan would spend hours telling you why this is, because basically when you look at the photosynth photosynthetic machinery, one, there's two parts of it. One part uses iron, the other part uses manganese, MN. Well, iron is used to convert, um, you know, basically CO2 to water and carbohydrates. Awesome. But the energy to basically drive the process, ATP, NADP, that, those are the energy drivers. Those are sitting over on the other side of the, of the process, which is basically uses manganese. So if you're deficient in manganese, you, you're iron poor, you're basically not iron, you're manganese poor plant is basically hmm, kind of sleepy. In fact, that's one of the things that we immediately see is if you get the manganese um, at the right level, the cuttings produce more rapidly, they grow more vigorously, more uniformly, and it's just because of manganese. And in fact, if you've been ironizing your crops by just putting iron on and they basically turn green and then two days, three days later, they turn yellow and they turn green and turn yellow, you've got a manganese deficiency because when you put manganese on, it basically is there. Now, why is there manganese deficiency? Well, manganese uptake by the plant is occurs at um, pH is not six. And of course, the pH that we try to grow most of our crops is right around six. So at the pH we grow our crops at, plants don't take up manganese very efficiently. So consequently, we tend to be drawing very low. And I stress this a lot because this is probably the one that confuses a lot of growers. So really be aware of manganese. So once, and those are basically, that's what's coming to you. So you need to make sure that you're adding um, the right amount of nutrients 
afterwards. And also making sure that you get the soil dried out because you get this confounding factor of wet soils reduces nutrient availability or uptake, either because you're putting clear water on, leaching them all out, or you're basically saturating the soil and there's not the root development because as we know, fish grow in water, roots grow in air, and the roots need to have that fuzzy little tips to increase the root um, nutrient uptake. So remember, keep it, make sure that you've got adequate manganese um, and not just iron and that you add phosphorus. Phosphorus is very important, not a lot, but you need to make sure that you got phosphorus. Don't be using 15015 because that zero basically means there's no phosphorus. You need to use 201020 or another one of the phosphorus containing fertilizers to make sure that you've got sufficient phosphorus. If you do see boron or you've got environment where you boron is a problem, make sure that you add additional boron. So, nutri um, so Nathan, why don't you talk about some of the research that you've done of the interaction between nutrition and um, using LED lights? Because this is probably the oops that most people miss. Yeah, I mean, when as more and more people adopt LEDs, there is a difference between high pressure sodium and LEDs, and it has to do with that infrared heat that comes off of that high pressure sodium. It heats up that leaf surface and drives transpiration, which drives nutrient uptake. So usually when you switch to LEDs, you need to increase your greenhouse temperatures by two to three degrees uh, Celsius. Um, and that doesn't always happen. And as Will indicated, some of these uh, cuttings may come in deficient of certain nutrients. Um, and one thing we hear a lot with LEDs is my plants are turning purple. And uh, there's literature out there looking at anthocyanins. Uh, some people say it's phosphorus. Um, we are doing research to determine what that really is, but it likely is a combination of both. LEDs do tend to cause a production of anthocyanins or that blue coloration. Blueberries have a lot of anthocyanins um, or purple coloration. And so that is a part of it, but it also could be partly in because of the phosphorus uptake, whether it's because of the plant or because of the uh, difference in temperature in the root zone and their ability to uptake phosphorus. So here we have, um, petunias that were produced under LEDs. And this is about two weeks after sowing. We're either talking about plugs right now or from seed, but the same thing applies to our cuttings. Um, early on in that process, we talked about acclimation of light. If you're pounding them with light, driving photosynthesis, but you don't have the nutrients there to take it up, you're gonna be deficient. So these uh, plugs here are showing some phosphorus deficiency under the low blue and medium blue LEDs seen here circled in purple. In comparison, the high pressure sodium is just above that threshold um, of being non-deficient in phosphorus. And so those ones are green. However, um, as we go along, we get more root development. Here we can see the comparison between between high pressure sodium and our LEDs on the right. Um, so as those plants developed more roots, the substrate was able to dry down. We were providing the adequate nutrients. We were able to overcome that deficiency and produce a actually darker green plant that does not look deficient and is more compact. And you can see here and the tissue analysis that we now are above that about 0.49 deficiency mark for phosphorus and petunia, we're above that level now. And so uh, phosphorus, and again, also has an effect of limiting stretch and growth. So uh, we're able to produce that more compact plant. But again, generally, when you add light, you have to have adequate building blocks there, like nutrients, in order to produce that high quality plant.